In this video, we're going to be looking at king and pawn endgames and how you can win them. At the end of this video, we're going to show how you can use opposition to draw what would seem like a lost endgame for you. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. Can you win this as white? If you can, great. We're going to move on to more complicated things in just a second, but first, let's learn how to win this endgame. Now, for white, here, the best idea is to move your king up the board like this. You want to get opposition against the black king, and you do not want to push your pawn forward. This is a very common mistake made at the lower level of chess. Basically, they just want to get their pawn to the end, so they push it and then put their king behind the pawn, basically on like f3, and then they'll try to like get it up like this. Not a good strategy to win. Black can defend against this. The best idea for white to win is to get the king in front of the pawn. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So white is trying to get in front of the pawn. Great. Now black just comes up like this, trying to defend, but white comes like this. This is called opposition. Basically, the kings are just staring at each other, and one of them has to move. Whichever one doesn't have to move has the opposition. Here, black is forced to move, so black does not have opposition. White has opposition. We force black to move, and all of a sudden, we run our king diagonally like this. This is the best way to win. We're going to eventually push our pawn up. We always want the king in front of the pawn because it's the easiest way to win. Let's say black just comes back like this. Again, we take the opposition from black. Black has to move in this direction or this direction. Let's say, or they don't have to move. Let's say they go back like this. And when we come here, they say, oh, look at me. I'm so smart. Now I have the opposition. It's not my turn. White has to move now, except white doesn't actually have to move their king. Instead, they can move their pawn. This forces the black king to lose the opposition, and now that we have the opposition, the black king moves, and all of a sudden, we are about to queen. Let's take a look at another position right now. Okay, so in this position is a draw. Why is this a draw? Basically, white can try all they want, but even if they try to come up the board, it doesn't matter. Black should just shuffle back and forth in this corner. If it's the H or A pawn that's trying to get to the end, whatever side is trying to defend, you just want to shuffle back in these two corners that the pawn is trying to get to. Why? Basically, even if white gets the pawn up there, which they will, it doesn't matter. However close they get, they can't win without actually just stalemating you. Pushing this pawn would cover all the squares the king can go to, so it's stalemate. And if you try to just like do something else like this, the black king will come up and actually eat the pawn. So this position is a draw. Just know that if it's the H or A pawns, it's going to be a draw as long as the king can just shuffle back between the two squares that the pawn's trying to get to. You can't win this, and it's very easy to defend. Now, in this position, we're going to try to win like this. We're going to take the idea of opposition and win. We don't want to move over here because, again, that's not winning opposition. We want to move our pawn up, taking opposition away from black because we force them to move, right? They have to move. So when they move, we're able to get up here and use the idea of just, you know, pushing the pawn and getting a queen to and to win this game. Okay, in this position, it's kind of the same thing, but only this time we can't waste a move by pushing the pawn. It's slightly more complicated, but you can still do it. Now, here we have a couple options. We don't really want to go back. That's not a good idea. So pick one of these two squares to go to. It doesn't really matter. Let's say we go to the right. All right, the king comes up. That... That makes it easy for us, but let's say instead the king would have gone to, let's say in this position after we move our king here, the king goes to this square. Now we would push our pawn forward, and after the king goes back, we could push our pawn again, and the only square the king has available to go to is here. We'd then push our king up here, and we'd eventually queen to a queen. But anyways, this is what the computer did, and eventually we just push our pawn up and win this game. Okay, for this example here, can you win as white? Let's use the ideas we learned before to win this endgame. Alright, let's think. What do we know we need to do in these endgames? That's right, we want to put our king in front of the pawn. The king tries to come up, let's take the opposition. This is the other idea we learned, right? The kings are staring at each other, we want to make them move. We don't want to move. We make them move, we're going to support our pawn. We steal the opposition once again, right? We're forcing them to move. And this is easy at this point, right? We've practiced this now. We can just move our king up now because after we push, you know, it's just a simple path to victory. Let's take a look at this next position. Kind of very similar to the last position. Let's take all the ideas again. We want to put our king in front of this pawn and we want to push it up. 
we can push this pawn and now we just push it to victory all right okay so this might be the most important lesson of this video can you draw this end game odds are if you're probably above 1400 you can maybe you can if you're under but let me explain how to draw this end game because it is very easy to do once you learn how but lots of chess players don't know how to do it especially if they're more amateur players now White's going to follow their normal idea, right? They're going to try to get in front of the pawn. If they just push the pawn, they make it easy for you. So if they try to run their king up, all right, they're going to try to take opposition. And it seems as though, I mean, you're going to lose, right? They're going to take the opposition. They're going to just run their pawn down the board. And we, But we don't want this, right? We actually have a chance to stop this. We can't go here. They'll just take the opposition again. We can't just run here. This is also bad. They'll just run their king down like this way. So what do we actually do? Can you find the move? Well, the move is indeed, I probably didn't give you enough time, but it's up here anyways, so for those of you who saw it, great. The move is to move your king one to the left, king to f7. Why is this move a good move? Well, now, white has a couple options here. The, they don't want to push their pawn again, because this makes it easier for us. We're, we're just going to be able to stop. We don't want white to get opposition, and we'll be able to just kind of stand in front of the pawn and stuff. So if white tries to come up like this, Will steal opposition from them and white is the one having to move now why is that good well let's just say they come here all right we, we take the opposition so regardless of where they go we're just going to take the opposition from them we're going to force them to move and then if they move we take the opposition again let's say they move back we take the opposition and we're hoping to repeat if they go here we take the opposition again all right white just realized that hey i can't win just like walking around with my king so i'm going to do the only other thing i can't i'm going to push my pawn they push their pawn now. Now, once again, we have to play carefully here. Now, what I like to do here is I just like to move the king over one square. It's very easy, and basically we're forcing white to push the pawn again. Moving back is not going to do us any good, because, for example, you go here, you lose the opposition. You go down, you lose the opposition. You don't want to lose the opposition. Going here, you're not allowing white to get the opposition, because there's a pawn there. They have to push their pawn. And again, you don't want to just run here and lose, so you only have a couple options. And in fact, most of these indeed work. Let's say, I like to do just move the king back a single square because it's the easiest, it's the most simple. And after the king moves forward, you steal the opposition again. Maybe you're starting to notice a pattern here. We're just forcing the king to push the pawn. Push the pawn. Now, here, you can just go here if you'd like, king to e7. Or you could move to the back. I would say probably going to the back is better, but it's they, they, both, they both draw. So after king to e8, now the king has a couple options. They could try to run to this side, but hey, what if they just try to go here? Ooh, what can you do, right? Well, you take the opposition again, force them to push the pawn, and all of a sudden, you've just drawn this endgame. Why? Hey, if they go king to e6, it's stalemate. The king blocks these... Sorry these two squares here and the pawn blocks these two squares and you cannot take the pawn because it's defended by the king you are indeed in stalemate so well let's say after after this position right here the king tries to run around to this side to try to be sneaky well now you just go up right <laughs> you, you force them to make a decision if they go back here you just repeat the position and if you go here right you just move back to e8, and after you go here, hey, it's basically the same thing, right? If they push here, they can't go here because then, you know, it's stalemate, and if they just run away to any of these other squares, you take the pawn, and it's game over. Tell me in the comments what endgames I should do next, or if I should continue doing these king and pawn endgames and make them more difficult in the next video. Please subscribe, and thanks for watching.